Hello everyone, I've got another thrifted find for you here today. This is a Tapco 6200A mixer. I picked this up off a of let go about two months ago, it was 60 bucks, and I'm going to give you a little bit of history about Tapco. Now, before I talk about Tapco, I need to talk about a company you might be more familiar with. Mackie. Mackie was founded by Greg Mackey in Woodenville, Washington. Uh, he was an ex-Boeing worker. He started Tapco first, but Mackey is what he's known for. Um, he was selling mixers out of his apartment, started a few companies, and that led to Mackey, which saw explosive growth in the 90s due to their robust designs. And they had a lot of smart manufacturing deals with assembly plants in Seattle. So if you did any kind of audio work in the 90s, there's a good chance that you worked on a Mackie mixer. Part of the reason I got the Tapco is because I already have a Mackie six channel mixer that I use as a preamp for my microphone. I run that into the line end of my sound card. And then I've got my audio interface here to do everything else that runs off of ASIO. With that context, I can talk about how Tapco was started. So uh, Greg Mackey, along with Martin Schneider, co-founded Tapco in 1970, and they developed the 6000 series of mixers. They were developed for um, rock music and uh, things that needed louder volume for live performances, as well as a rudimentary home recording. These have very high outputs relative to uh, the more uh, sensitive bo mixing boards of the time. I also came across a quote from Greg Mackey himself that I think really speaks to the engineering and design philosophy of this mixer. He said, consumers have a tough time getting past a poor quality exterior, even if the internal quality is excellent. And with this mixer, you have a pretty simple layout. This is easy for anyone to understand, especially someone who might not uh, have his advanced knowledge. After introducing the 6200, there were a plethora of other mixers you could get for them, as well as expansion modules, effects modules. There really are a ton of different variants of these circuits out there, a lot of them in rack mount format. So if you uh, ever come across these, they're actually pretty decent units. I would just do research on which particular one you have. You can find um, the manuals on manuals lib most of the time, and they'll explain generally all of the... Uh, amenities and features you get with your mixer. Now, in 1976, Greg Mackey sold Tapco to Electro Voice. They're known for their, uh, their live sound equipment and stuff like that. But in the early 2000s, Greg Mackey actually bought them uh, the brand of Tapco back from Electro Voice. And you can still to this day buy modern, um, they're, they're the half analog m mixing stuff. And then you get the little digital effects. Those, uh, Budget versions of those are sold under the Tapco uh, badge now um, to this day, and you can still buy them new. And I think um, any new Mackie design will inevitably get a cheaper version badged under that. Perhaps the most interesting feature of this mixer uh, comes from the A in the namesake. That stands for Auto Pan. Now, auto pan was uh, a very early and uh, relatively budget implementation of a sort of auto level control. That's why you don't get faders here. Um, John Mackey, well, it, in the the, um, the the technical diagrams and information for this mixer, it talks about how um, using an actual sliding fader reduces your headroom, which makes sense because it's a resistor. So you're introducing um, an electrical pad to your signal, which is going to cut your headroom by whatever the, uh, the fader is at relative to how much resistance is uh, being introduced to the signal. So with these knobs, you only get volume. And essentially what happens is the, um, the preamps will kind of switch themselves so that um, no matter the signal coming in, this volume is just relative. It's relative to the whole mix and not so much the, um, the uh, the, because normally with a mixer you have your signal coming in and then you adjust a preamp up here and that gives you your sort of uh, signal for the channel strip and then you have a fader down here and that adjusts your volume. You don't get control over the preamp. All you get is control of how much volume is being sent to the master. Now I'm going to quickly go over the features of this mixer. You have bass, and treble control for your equalization on every channel. It comes with six channels. Uh, I need to replace this, but 
you know, I, I barely even use all five at this point. I'm waiting to upgrade my interface. So that'll come later. I might do a video on that. I need to take this thing apart and recap and calibrate it anyways. Um, you get effects ends up here, which goes to a, a stereo effects bus. And then you have your panning up here for every channel. Now over here you have left and right master volume. And then you get uh, what they call microphone equalization, which is a, a six decibel per octave filter with a nine decibel boost at 20 kilohertz. That's just gonna give you a whole lot of high end for the entire mix. And then this is actually quite useful. It's a rumble filter, uh, at least that's what they call it. And it's a six decibel drop at 100 octaves at six decibels per octave. That will cut out low end, uh, 60 hertz hum. It's useful for killing that if it's coming out of the source. You've got your power here, and then you've got some nice VU meters for your left and right. Now here you can see the back. You've got a little made in USA silk screen. It consumes 10 watts, which is actually quite low for a unit this old. It weighs 12 pounds. You've got the 6200A badging. You've got your serial number here, um, a grounding screw. I should probably hook that up. I didn't really know that was here. Um, you've got your line level outputs, stacking outputs. This is for bridging multiple mixers together. They had what they called expander units, and um, this is for chaining them together. You have your effects return and send for your stereo, so you get mono out and you can send stereo back in. And then these are all your microphone inputs. I have a couple occupied, one with an XLR, two coming in. These are actually outputs from my noise gate. Um, those have uh, some quarter inch microphones going inside of it. And then uh, you got XLR, quarter inch input, and then channel patching, which is just an insert. You can either uh, patch in um, other effects processing on an individual channel. You can also push the, um, the connector halfway in and patch that out directly um, it, it will, so some mixers when you patch in as an insert will just send the, the preamp. This is useful because uh, when you patch in as an insert, it sends the whole channel strip with the EQ um, directly out, which is uh, perfect because I can essentially just run a ton of mics to this and then patch each individual out to my mixer. And then I can have the characteristics of the microphone preamps of this and then import that into my digital audio workstation. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and thanks for checking out this Tapco mixer. Um, sorry, I don't have a sound demo for this, but there's not really much to hear. Um, I might put out a video on some of the distortion tones you can get out of this thing. It's nice for a guitar and synthesizer. I mainly use it for the saturation you get for recording drum mics through it, um, but that's not really gonna come through all that well on a rudimentary recording. Now. Tomorrow's video is most likely going to be about this cool little Panasonic TV, so look forward to that.